So we've always known that the PS5 has an expandable storage, but it just wasn't made available to end users. Perhaps Sony was waiting for the right time to release it, or they were still working on the technology from a software side of things. But it's now made available to beta firmware users. So people who are on their uh, beta firmware or have access to that, they can go ahead and put in an expandable SSD or an NVMe SSD into their SSD slot and then uh, get more storage that way. But it's actually quite amazing what the reaction was to this. You would think that people would be happy to have extra storage that they've been complaining about for so long, but actually the reaction was more the opposite. It was kind of like, well, uh, people are confused about what to do. And uh, there almost seems like there's a lot of FUD or fear, uncertainty and doubt. And we're just going to highlight some of those responses. Uh, Rich from Review Tech will be featured again, but uh, we're not going to put the spotlight on him. Uh, the one that I want to talk about is Gary Witter's response. Now, I'm not aiming this at Gary, but I feel like this is, uh, I've seen a lot of posts kind of like this, so that's why I'm using Gary's uh, as an example. But uh, yeah, it kind of blows my mind that people are actually worried about this. And I think actually some of it is quite hypocritical in terms of the fact that uh, if we're praising PS5 for the SSD speeds, then at the same time, we cannot really complain about the fact that third-party SSDs are not as good as PS5's SSD. Okay. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And we have a Discord server, so come along and join us there, and I'll leave a link in the description below. So, once again, I'm going to be using Mark Cerny's PS5 hardware reveal to make my case why the PS5 has been designed the way it has, and why the PS5 SSD is currently the fastest SSD out there, and why the third-party options just aren't as fast. And uh, I'm quite enjoying using the Mark Cerny videos because Mark Cerny designed the PS5, so he knows what he's talking about. So how can he possibly be wrong? Uh, but uh, what we're going to do first is uh, we're going to go to some tweets. Uh, these ones from Gary Witter and then Rich from Review Tech USA. There are a few others as well, uh, but they talk about the reaction from this expandable storage. And then I'll go to those Mark Cerny video clips and then I'll come back and discuss. And then after that, I want to actually show you uh, through the diagrams on Sony's website how easy it is to actually replace your SSD or expand your SSD storage. And I think you'll find that uh, a lot of this reaction has been overblown. Okay, let's go to some tweets. And we have one here from Gary Witter. And if you don't know who Gary Witter is, he was the screenwriter, author of Rogue One, The Book of Eli, Star Wars Rebels, The Walking Dead. He was the former PC Gamer Editor-in-Chief. So he knows about PC gaming, he knows about expandable storage. And I think he really wrote that tweet from the mindset of this thing being a mainstream consumer product where people just want to buy something that says PS5 SSD on the box and then just put that into their system. So I understand where he's coming from that angle. But uh, let's read the tweet first, and he says, uh, PS5 expandable storage is finally coming as latest firmware goes beta, but not even SSDs that meet Sony specs may be as fast as the internal storage. And get this, you, only, you also need to research, shop for, and attach your own compatible heatsink, geeky face, sorry, but lolol, hashtag shitshow. So uh, now that tweet, I don't agree with most of it. So certainly the first part I find a little bit hypocritical because I see a lot of uh, Sony fans, they praise the SSD speed, how fast the SSD is. Now, the reason it's so fast is because Sony designed it to be the fastest uh, possible SSD that they could. So therefore, third-party SSDs just aren't going to be as fast. And I'm going to show you from Mark Sony's video uh, the internal PS5 SSD actually has a custom flash controller on it. Whereas the expandable SSDs, they have their own flash controllers that aren't as strong. So the custom flash controller on that PS5 SSD has six priorities and the flash controller on those expandable SSDs have just the two priorities. So it's not as strong and that's one of the reasons why it doesn't perform as well, but it can be, co over, or it can be compensated um, if you make 
if you get a SSD that is faster than the one that is in the PS5. So the current PS5 SSD runs at about 5.5 gigabytes per second. And if you buy a SSD that does like seven gigabytes per second or the fastest possible on PCIe Gen 4, you can compensate for those uh, lack of priorities. Now, the second part of his tweet, he says, you also need to research, shop for, and attach your own compatible heatsink. Well, I think there are going to be guides made. So Sony is going to put out a guide for what SSDs to buy. Eurogamer actually has put out a guide as well. So um, this is a guide that just came out 29th of July, so uh, yesterday, and it says best SSD for PS5 2021. Uh, you can see that it's got all of the information there. You don't even really need to know because um, these are the SSDs that actually work fine with the PS5. So you can just buy one of these eight or nine PSDs, uh, not SSDs for the PS5, and you're going to not have any problems. You're just going to insert that and there's not going to be any real issue. So I don't know why there was such a big fuss about, oh, now I have to do a lot of research for it. I don't think you're going to have to because there are just going to be guides like this made. So let's go to some other tweets quickly. So Richard has, oh, Richard from Review Tech USA, he says, people are going to get pissed about my take on the PS5 hard drive solutions today, but do you think the soccer moms are going to know how to pick out an SSD with the proper IO speeds, heat sink requirements, and dimensions for their son daughter's console? Get real. Well, I think I just showed that there are going to be guides available. It's going to be very easy to find an SSD. And even like when you go into shops, they'll just have labels on them saying, this one is fine for PS5s. So I don't think that's going to be a problem. So SkillUp says, going to take out a student loan and get a master's in electrical engineering so I can upgrade my PS5 SSD. So I know he's just joking. I thought that was pretty funny. But if they only gave out a master's degree for just using a screwdriver, uh, that would be amazing. <laughs> Now, Spawnwave says, I'm surprised Sony hasn't partnered with a manufacturer for a branded NVMe drive yet to put in stores. Trying to explain heatsink thickness to a mom or dad, buying a PS5 is going to be fun. Well, I think it's, um, this is at least constructive criticism. So I think that's good on that part. So I definitely think that Sony should put out their own NVMe. And I also think that they should put out their custom flash controller that they put into their internal PS5 SSD and put that on the expandable SSD. So that way, the, the expandable SSD will have the same performance as that internal SSD. And I think uh, everybody is just going to buy that instead. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some of those Mark Cerny video clips about the way that they design the PS5 SSD, and then we'll come back and discuss. By the time you realize you need a piece of data, it's much too late to go out and load it. So system memory has to contain all of the data that could be used in the next 30 seconds or so of gameplay. On PlayStation 5, though, the SSD is very close to being like more RAM. Typically, it's fast enough that when you realize you need a piece of data, you can just load it from the SSD and use it. There's no need to have lots of data parked in system memory waiting to potentially be used. Priority is very important. You can imagine the player heading into some new location in the world and the game requesting a, a few gigabytes of textures. And while those textures are being loaded, an enemy is shot and has to speak a few dying words. Having multiple priority levels lets the audio for those dying words get loaded immediately. M2 drives with PCIe 4.0 are now out in the market. We're getting our in uh, samples and seeing mm, four or five gigabytes a second from them. By year's end, I expect there will be drives that saturate 4.0 and support seven gigabytes a second. Having said that, we are comparing apples and oranges though, because that commercial M2 drive will have its own architecture, its own flash controller, and so on. For example, the NVMe specification lays out a priority scheme for requests that the M2 drives can use. And that scheme is pretty nice, but it only has two true priority levels. Our drives support six. We can hook up a drive with only two priority levels, definitely, but our custom I.O. unit has to arbitrate the extra priorities rather than the M2 drive's flash controller. And so the M2 drive needs a little extra speed to take care of issues arising from the different approach.
Okay, I just want to quickly go over some of the things that Mark Cerny talked about. And there were two things primarily. Uh, the first one was the dream of the SSD or developing games with an SSD in mind. So obviously with previous generation, uh, you were developing games off a hard drive. That hard drive was very slow. And so the transfer rate was like 100 megabytes per second. So they had to load everything onto the system RAM and they would load 30 seconds of data into there so that you wouldn't be missing textures and objects as you were running around. So fast forward to today, with today's generation, uh, with the PS5 SSD, that SSD runs a lot faster. So it can be uh, run more like system RAM. And now with system RAM and with the transfer speed being five and a half gigabytes per second and the system RAM being 16 gigabytes, you can load that system RAM up in like three seconds. So they're trying to use the SSD kind of a bit like RAM and swapping things in and out. And what they're really hoping to do is make a game where you know, everything that you see on screen is using up as much of that 16 gigabytes as possible and then when you're turning around and it might take you like one second to turn around you're loading up five and a half gigabytes per second of data so that's what they're hoping to do with the ssd and that's why they were trying to make it as fast as possible now the second point is that there's a custom flash controller on the ssd and i already talked a little bit about that so i don't want to go over too much of it but essentially that custom flash controller on that ps5 ssd has six priorities and then the uh the expandable ssds from third parties they really only have the two priorities what you can do is you can buy a expandable storage that actually is a little bit faster than the internal ssd which has five and a half gigabytes per second so you would buy an expandable ssd that has say like seven gigabytes per second and that way that would compensate for some of that uh, missing priorities also just quickly if you're just wondering what an ssd controller does well i'll just quickly read you one line from here so we've got here SSD controller solutions have never been more integral in NAND flash system designs. NAND flash memory storage applications require a controller to communicate and manage data transactions between the host interface and NAND flash arrays, and the selection of this controller is vital in ensuring that data is handled and managed reliably. So effectively, that flash controller is directing the data into the storage and it's also moving that storage out of that SSD and into the system RAM. Now finally I wanted to talk about how easy it is to install that expandable SSD. Now there were some comments on those tweets and they talked about how difficult it is to install the expandable SSD. Well if you just look at the photos you can see just how easy it is to expand your ssd so we'll just go to the uh, installation steps here and there are some diagrams here and i'm i think you can see this but essentially uh it's so easy where it's the, maybe the hardest part is actually um, taking off the panel uh, or the bottom of the ps5 and this isn't any more difficult than say you replacing the batteries off your Xbox controller. You have to remove the panel uh, off the bottom, and then there's a single screw that you need to take out because it was sitting there waiting for an SSD to be inserted in. So you take out that screw with a regular Phillips screwdriver, um, and then what you need to do, uh, there's a spacer adjuster as well, so you can just adjust that. But all you do is really insert that SSD, into the slot and it only goes in one way uh, and then you're going to screw that screw down and then you're going to put the panel back and i'm not sure why there is such hysteria over using a screwdriver um, do people not actually <laughs> uh, use uh, screwdrivers anymore uh, i don't know oh i guess like you know with iphones and that you, you can't really do anything anymore so maybe people are not used to taking open uh taking apart their products okay that's going to be it for this one let me know below what your thoughts are on the installation of the ssd do you think it's too easy or do you think it's too hard let me know in the comments below and as always if you like this video make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and i'll see you in the next one